Okay, so we're back with the 406, Friends 406, so if you've watched uh, my channel, uh, then you'll have seen some other videos about it. Um, basically, I uh, did a, f a service on it and noticed as soon as I drove it, the back end was all floaty. And then we had some play in the back wheels. We've also got some very odd tyre wear. I don't know if you can pick that up. Um, and you can feel it on your hand, almost a serration to it. And you check on this side. So again, some different tyre wear, as in it's smooth one side and fine the other. And this has never been on the front as far as I'm aware, uh, for as long as I've had the car. So odd tyre wear, floaty back end, and then let me just put this on a tripod and I'll show you. Uh, show you how wobbly these back wheels are. So hopefully you can see this and hear it. Can you hear that? Basically, uh, about one o'clock on the wheel, there's a huge amount of in out play. There we go. And now I'll take the wheel off and we'll show you the joint that it is. Um, yeah, it's a good DIY fix. DIY mechanic can do this, it's only two joints, one little connection. So, pretty simple to do. I'll have that fixed. Tools for this job, um, other than the jack and axle stand, wheel brace, take the wheels off. 18 mil spanner, 16 mil spanner, 16 mil socket, 19 mil socket, uh, also an 18 mil socket which isn't here, and grips and a hammer. Obviously, always need a hammer. Right, let's just uh... right, let's just have a look at that play again. It is confused sometimes with ball joint in the bottom here, which are quite common on these. So hand at one o'clock, the other one at about seven o'clock. You see that? It's pretty horrific. There we go. Not good. Let me show you from underneath if I can. Right, you're underneath the car now. I'm going to show you that nice bit of play in that joint. See that? So that's what we need to replace. Let's wipe the wheel off. sides and they're both knocking profusely so once you put those sorted common fault uh, thankfully they're a lot easier to change on this side and thankfully they're more unreliable than this side because this side's a pig and that side's easy that side's cheap about 10 quid a size and like that um, so first thing we're going to do is buy a brush get my brush in there somehow get some plus gas or some freeing fluids this one's a little bit tricky to get out. You can see it. Uh, probably not very well, but she's there somewhere. And then uh, there we go. Anyway, we'll um, rub them down, undo those big bolts, sort it. Oh uh, yeah, something I uh, just forgot to mention. Sorry. Is before you undo this, and if you can just see, no, you can't, but there you can now. Hopefully, um, these are concentric. And that concentric washer in there because these are adjustable. They do adjust the uh, tracking on the rear. So you want to mark them, you can just see some markings I've made in there. My ideal recommendation, oh hang on, you've fallen over. You know, my recommendation obviously is to, uh, and you can't see the markings on that side, mark both of them anyway because it's on both sides. Obviously, the recommendation is to get these full alignment done, which I have recommended to customer once I've done this. Um, as long as you mark them absolutely perfectly, you'd hope it'd be okay, but it'd be worth having a check. Most places won't charge you if it's not needing adjusting, and if it doesn't need adjusting, at least you've got loosened it all off, and they'll love you for it. Now, if you find that uh, this joint here, a little bit like track rod ends, etc., and drop links start spinning, um, as we're getting rid of this, you know, just cut the boot open if needs be, get a set of vice grips in there to hold the joint because it's spinning within itself. Then you get to span all the ratchet underneath and get it undone, just like that. Something I forgot to mention on the other side, but by the wonders of editing, I can mention now before we do the other side on the video, is if you have a look there, 
uh, you'll see the concentric washer and nut and bolt. You have to undo the nut, get the nut all the way off. You can't wind it out from this side. If you did that, um, the bolt itself would round off a little knuckle on the washer which seats a little groove on the bolt. So you have to hold the bolt steady and take the washer off, just if you're wondering. Which is a little bit annoying because the way it's fitted it's difficult to get to the nut and easy to get to the bolt. But there we go, that's what we've got to do. So there's your groove we're talking about. And there's your washer, look. And that sits in that groove, sort of. So if you were to turn the bolt, you'd ring that off, ruin your threads, ruin your washer, and then you wouldn't have an even concentric washer and bolt. So you have to undo the nut off the bolt. Right then, uh, and there it is, she's in. So a few things to take care of. If uh, you're struggling with these here at the back, you can try and fit them up first, and then just lean on that part of the drum there to push this part of the hub in, to slot that in. Um, and there you go, and to note this was a 19mm not an 18mm uh, like the old one was, and she's in. So obviously I've marked up, uh, lined up all the marks, but you probably want to go now and get a four wheel alignment to make sure that everything on the back end is right before you put new tyres on and ruin them as well. Job done. Thanks for watching, subscribe, like, share, do all the stuff you don't really want to do. Bye.